All right, so now that we're experts on color theory, it's time to start looking at designing single hue tone tents. And when we think about designing these, these single hue tone tents, there's a couple things we need to consider. The first is what tent do you want to add? And the second is where do you want to add it? Do you want it in the shadows or the highlights or the midtones, or do you want it everywhere across the whole tonal range? So on the first question of picking a tent, uh, the most important thing I found is that we want to pick something that's enhancing existing cues in the image. We don't want to fight against the existing cues. So we're going to, we're going to look at this picture and I want to, to pick a, a tent that is complementing the, uh, the predominantly kind of bluish green tent, uh, that's, that's already present in the bridge. And then when we add a tent, we want to make sure that we're clear about the RGB recipe for the tent. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. We want to build our RGB curve first, then add the tent on top of it. Otherwise, we're going to have a really, really difficult time trying to coordinate everything. And we want to make sure we don't start adjusting anything until we're ready. And that's one of the biggest mistakes I see beginners making here is they just start trying to manipulate things in the tone curves and they don't really know what it is their, their, their target is. All right, so let's hop over into Lightroom and we're going to adjust this image of this blue corner building and uh, bridge. So I already mentioned that the, the tone in here, that the hue that I want to be bringing out is this blue blue green tent in the um in in the bridge work here and if i mouse over it go ahead and zoom in on this image in your lightroom and mouse over this area and just find an area in the middle here and leave the mouse there and look over to the top right and look underneath the histogram and let's let's look at this reading so we've got about 28 percent of red 32 percent green and 35% blue. So let's just break this down, right? It, we know that if all three of these were the same number, we would have a gray color, right? So if it were 28% red, 28% green, and 28% blue, then this would just be a gray color. So why isn't this gray? Well, there's green that's been added, and there's blue that's been added. There's more green and blue than there is red, and that's why this has a color and it isn't just gray. In terms of how much there is of each of those, well, there's about twice as much blue as there is green, maybe a little bit less than twice as much. So we can just simplify this and say this is about two parts blue to one part green. And if we look at our cheat sheet, we can actually see that this is somewhere between um, an azure color and a, and a cyan, but we'll just, we'll just say it's azure. So two parts blue, one part green would be how we would add this tent using the additive method. Or if we wanted to subtract, um, colors to bring out an azure tent, we would decrease red and decrease green by about half as much as we decrease the red. So if any of that didn't make sense, go back and rewatch it. Maybe rewatch the section on um, on the color theory, or just leave a comment. I can try to explain that a little bit clearer. But I now know that I want to add about twice as much blue as green um, using the additive method, and subtract about twice as much red as green using the subtractive method. Okay. So before we start jumping into the red, green, blue curves, I'm just going to make some adjustments to the RGB curve. So follow along. I'm just going to raise the black point. So grab that and raise it to about 6%. I'm going to lower the white point. So grab here at the top right, and we'll lower that to about 86%. And I will now add uh, let's add in the shadows. So we're going to pull down the shadows. So find a point around 10% and bring that down to about 
7. All right, now find a point around 60%, and I'm going to have this be the crossover point. This will be the point where we go from being under to maybe being a little bit over. All right, so grab the point around 60. I mean, you want to end up around uh, 60 input, 60 output. Okay, awesome. And we'll do one more. Grab a point around 43% and drag it down to 37. Okay, so this is looking, um, it looks a little bit dark right now, but, but don't worry about that. Um, when we start adding in the uh, tents, because we're using the additive method, it will it'll be a little bit brighter in the shadows here. All right, so let's add blue first. I'm going to add, grab around zero in the blue channel and pull it up to around six. And when we're when we're adding tints to uh, color specific curves, really what we're looking at is we're looking at the difference in space between the original line, which you see represented with the dotted line there, and the new line. And so I want this to be pretty even. Um, I want it to be pretty evenly uh, pushed up through the uh, the darker half of the tone. So I'm I'm going to add another point. So grab a point around 30, and we're just going to make sure that that's around 35. Okay, and it is. And now grab a point around 50 and just pull down ever so slightly until you see that um, that the line, the new line, merges on top of the dotted line. And right around here, right around uh, maybe uh, 49, 51 is about right. And the reason we do that is because I don't want, uh, I don't want to be extending this past about the midpoint. So this is this is exactly what I want. There's a little bit of separation that's pretty consistent all the way through the darker tones, and then it starts to even out. All right, so now we have to do that same thing, but we do it about half as much with green, maybe a little bit more than half as much. So take the black point of green, and we're going to raise that from 0 up to about 4%. Okay. And... Now we're going to check around 30, and that's about right, about 33%. Okay, and now we're going to take the center point here and just pull this down until we see the line um, merging with the original line. So right around 49.4% uh, input and 50.6% output. All right, so let's look at the image now, and we can do a quick before and after by hitting the backslash key. And I mean, you can really see that we've added, we've, this this section here feels uh, much, much more consistent. And maybe it's a little bit, a little bit dark. Maybe we'll come in here and just uh, push the shadows just a tiny bit to get some of that detail back. Um, but by and large, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. The other thing maybe we can do is take down the saturation. And the reason we take down the saturation is because we're actually adding saturation when we, uh, when we add to the, uh, to the channel specific tone curve. And so if I pull down saturation just a little bit, maybe to 15%, it starts to look a little bit, a little bit more like I want it to feels a little bit more, uh, a little bit more neutral. All right, so there you have it. That is adding um, adding a uh, a complementing tint to uh, just the shadow areas. So let's make a copy, a virtual copy of this photo by hitting Command, comma, and now we're going to add to this image that same tint into the highlight areas. 
And now, so how do we do that? We just use the additive method, right? So we just added about twice as much blue as we did green. Well, now we're gonna use the subtractive method in the highlight. So we're gonna pull down red, um, about twice as much red as we pull down of green. So let's try this. Let's go to the red channel and take down the white point of the red from 100 to about 96. Okay. And now uh, check around 69. Whoops. And you want the point at 69 to, to read out at about uh, 65. Okay. Now take the point around 50% and just pull it up until you see the line to the left of it going right over the previous, uh, the original curve point. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing with green, but we're gonna do it by about half as much. So grab the white point of green and we're gonna pull that down from 100 to, uh, 98, maybe just a little bit, a little bit less than 98, 90, 97.6, that's about right. All right, now take a point around 69, and we're going to uh, pull that down to 67. All right, and there you have it. So. If you go back and look at the previous image, you can see the difference. In this, in this, in this image, we're only seeing those tints being applied to the shadows. In the second instance, because we use the subtractive method on the highlights, we're now seeing uh, an even uh, tint being applied to pretty much the entire image. So, I mean, you could really go with with either one of these. These are just different looks. I kind of like the look of just uh, having the tent in the shadows. Um, I think that looks pretty cool. But now that we have that, we could actually take, we could take this and we could copy the settings, hitting Command C. And we'll just take the tone curve and uh, all the color info and the process version and hit copy. And now we can apply it to any of our other photos. So I could go to uh, to this image and hit Command V, and that actually looks pretty good. It kind of it kind of complements some of the green in uh, in here anyway, and adds kind of a cool uh, a cool blue tint to it. Now, what if I tried that on this image? Well, if I try it on this image, I'm actually the results aren't aren't terrible, but they're they're not what I would do if I were processing this image, and I'm really going kind of against the grain here, uh, working against the tones that are already naturally in this image. So this has a lot of a lot of warm tones, a lot of warm shadows, and that's what I'm trying to bring out. So doing having a tent like this is a little bit a little bit counterproductive. So when I say we we want to make sure that we're emphasizing tones and hues that are already in the image, that's really when we're gonna see the best results with single hue tents. So I know that's a lot, and if you have any questions, uh, be sure to drop them in the comments below.